It's a Northwest Lifestyle Weekend on Como News. IRG's Health Talk continues. All right, our first guest is Dr. Teresa Girolami. She's going to be talking about the differences between COVID, cold, flu. Shannon, people get a little sniffle or a sneeze. Sometimes they think, oh my gosh, it's COVID, and it could be something serious. But she's going to help us differentiate uh, between those things that should be, uh, you know, we should be concerned about. Absolutely, Tom. This time of year, you know, we have cold, flu, and now we have COVID. How do you know which one you have? How do you know how concerned you should be? How do you know when to go to the doctor? She's going to help us out with differentiating, like you said, between those various symptoms. All right. Here is Dr. Girolami and Shannon O'Kelly. Welcome to Health Talk. And joining us today again is Dr. Teresa Girolami. Dr. Girolami, how are you doing? I'm great. Thank you, Shannon. Yeah, thanks for joining us again. You were on a little while ago. I can't remember exactly what it was, but we talked about COVID and some of the situations around COVID. Uh, Right now, we know we're in the flu and cold season, and I think our listeners want to know. I know I've been asked several times by people, particularly employees, hey, I've I've got the sniffles or I've got a sore throat, you know, maybe a little bit achy. Do I have COVID? Do I have the flu? Do I have a cold? Let's talk about the differences. Yeah, that, that coming into cold and flu season now, it's a very timely topic. So I just kind of wanted to review, just touch on the basic things of cold, flu, allergies, and COVID. So let's just start with cold. Lots of people get cold in the um, fall and winter time. And that generally presents with a runny nose. I might feel stuffy. I might have a little headache, uh, maybe some sneezing, maybe a sore throat. It's just kind of I don't feel very well. Then it's interesting, people have fall allergies, so there's things they're allergic to in the fall. So that can present as, you know, itchy eyes, runny nose, sneezing, post-nasal drip, uh, and just not feeling very well, and maybe a cough. And that would be allergies, typical classic allergies. Flu. Flu season usually comes upon us, I, I would say, January, February. So, but it could be any time. We could have an early flu season. We never quite know. And the flu is one of those viruses that kind of morphs. It changes every year. That's why we have a new flu vaccine um, every year. So that's more of an abrupt onset. Uh, I, I would say someone that came in the office and said, I have a fever of 103. I am achy all over. I feel like I've been run over by a truck. I have chills. I am in bed. I am flat out. That to me is flu first. That would I, that's what I'd be thinking. Now we have COVID into the mix, and that's a, an interesting dynamic because in the beginning, in March, when we were first being told what the signs and symptoms of that were, they were very classic. They were shortness of breath, chest pain, cough, fever over you know 100.4. Since then, it's morphed into loss of taste and smell. Um, you could have body aches, you could have a headache, and some institutions are counting everything as possible COVID. For instance, like sore throat and diarrhea, but those clearly aren't the classic symptoms. So just a little guideline on if you can think you can fall into one of those four categories, it's very helpful when you make the call to the doctor, because those are kind of the calls we ask on the phone. Okay, what do you, let's just ask, you know, what do you think these things are? So if somebody's looking like they have COVID, then obviously our our advice is something different. The interesting thing now is now we have um, these rapid COVID tests, which are very similar to the rapid influenza or flu um, tests that we've had for a long time. And now you can co-test. So those are nasty little tests. They go up your nose. They're a nasal (laughs) swab. Um, And uh, you could test for both flu and COVID-19 at the same time and get an answer back relatively quickly. I foresee that going to be very popular in the next coming months. But I just want to say on behalf of some of the organizations I represent, which is King County Medical Society, and I recently got elected to the Board of Trustees at the Washington State Medical Association, we are very much encouraging people to get a flu shot. So you could maybe eliminate one of those categories if you had a flu shot and you really didn't get the flu. So there is something you can do about trying to figure out what they are. If you have allergies, go ahead and take your antihistamine and treat your allergies like you normally would. If you have a cold, hopefully it'll go away in a couple days. COVID and flu are different. They're, they're, they're more contagious. And that's why we have these rapid tests of which we can try to identify them um, relatively quickly. Flu has a treatment, a very uh, easy treatment, which is uh, an antiviral that we've been using for a long time. There's a couple of those out now. And if you get flu within the first 48 hours and you get in and you get a test, you can get on medication, you can shorten up your course and make the symptoms not so severe. 
COVID, on the other hand, as we all know, <laughs> we're waiting for better treatments and, and just quarantining at the moment if you're not if you're not ill enough to be seen in the hospital. We will have more with Dr. Teresa Girolami and Shannon O'Kelly coming up after this time out on Como. It's a Northwest Lifestyle Weekend on Como News. Now back to IRG's Health Talk. We're back with our conversation with Dr. Teresa Girolami and Shannon O'Kelly on Como. Dr. Girolami, uh, thank you again for joining us on Health Talk. Thank you for describing the difference in symptoms. Very challenging for physicians and even gen- general public to really understand, do I have COVID? Do I have the flu, allergies, or a cold? But not only medical symptoms that we're dealing with right now, I can't imagine with the public experiencing what we call pandemic fatigue, all the challenges with kids uh, being educated at home, virtual, your patients must be coming in, I would imagine, with a lot of anxiety, anxious depression. I mean, the mental toll has got to be significant with the population right now. Absolutely. And that's, I think, something that's not really um, garnered a lot of attention. So for instance, you know, you, you mentioned, you know, my mother just died. And so now I'm trying to plan a funeral. So when you think about that, there really aren't allowing any funerals. So now you have a, a lost one and you can't even grieve. And that has been very tough on anybody that's lost anyone during this time. The schooling has been a very interesting dynamic. I have patients come in every day. We have lots of working parents now. Both parents work. Right. And now you have a child that can't go to kindergarten because they're too old to go to preschool and kindergarten's not in session. And the kindergartners have these laptops that have a password that's about 20 characters long. <laughs> and it goes down regularly. So one of the parents is, must be coming in there, attending this child to get them back on this computer to try to do kindergarten online, that has become extremely stressful in many households. The, the trying to parent your child, be your teacher to your child, do your job um, has been very difficult. A lot of people have quit their jobs to go home and um, teach their children. Another interesting aspect is this great productivity we're hearing about from all these companies about how they're getting so much more production out of their workers being virtual. Well, that has a toll. These patients come in and I say, hey, are you going outside? Are you getting any kind of fresh air? And they say, no, I'm on my computer more hours than I've ever been in in my life. The anxiety, the depression, the loneliness, the isolation, the fear we see in the media sometimes is, is interpreted as stay at home and shutter inside and do nothing. And, and a lot of people do that. And that's really just not good for human nature. Uh, they need actually to go outside. I talked to a 13-year-old boy. I said, do you ever go outside? He says, no, I do my homework and then I game all day. Yeah. I said, oh, yeah. my goodness. And he had an event where he tried to hurt himself. So it Boy. is mm-hmm. um, it is frightening and it, it's hard to know, you know, h- how to balance it all. Sh- should you distance and stay six feet away and wear your mask? Absolutely. Try to be a good steward. But that doesn't mean you shudder inside. You must treat your mental health like you would your physical health. I believe in going outside and exercising. I believe in fresh air. You need to exercise your lungs. These things attack our lungs. So go outside, get some fresh air. You need to sleep well. You need to stay hydrated. You need to do normal things. I really think in the mental health realm, everybody needs to set boundaries. I am not going to be on the computer 14 hours a day. That is no good for me. I want you, I tell my patients, I want you to set a boundary. I want you to have a lunch hour. I want you to go outside for 30 minutes every day. I want your eyes to take a rest from the computer. I need you to be well. I need you to have good thoughts, happy thoughts. You know, really, I believe in, you know, go outside and smell the roses and take a deep breath and a timeout. Great information. I love the positivity. If we stay positive, work together, we will get through this. Dr. Jirlami, thank you so much for your time and thank you for your positive message. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, you've been uh, t- hearing from Dr. Teresa Girolami talking about the differences between the cold, the flu, COVID-19, and it's great if you're a parent to, to make sure you know uh, some of these tips that she gave you. Yeah, Tom, you, you got to go in and get tested if you feel like you have some symptoms. We all have to take responsibility. This is a uh, unprecedented situation. All right, we're back with the next guest right after this time out on Como.